My name is Tadis, and today we are going through Flutter's recommendation for architecting your application. It has been six years since Flutter was initially released, and the Flutter team finally has a guide on how to architect your applications. To put it lightly, it has been met with mixed feelings. I decided to go through all of it line by line and get a full understanding of it. In this video, I will break down Flutter's recommendation for using MVVM architecture, how it compares to the MVVM architecture we teach in the best Flutter course on the internet, and we will end with my opinions about the recommendation. This is a key visual to understand about Flutter MVVM architecture. It's separated into two sections, the UI and the data layer. The view is the actual UI, that's what the user sees and interacts with. Then each view needs to have a one-to-one -one relationship with a view model. This view model is where all the business logic happens. In other words, your view should not do any logic itself unless it's directly tied to a UI. Flutter docs say that the only logic that can reside in a view are simple if statements to show and hide widgets, animation logic, layout logic, and simple routing logic. So then the view model handles the logic. This logic can either directly or indirectly manipulate the data held within the view model. But there is one more key part that the view model needs to do. It needs to expose a listenable for the view to update whenever the data it depends on changes. There are plenty of ways to do this, but my favorite is value notifier. We will get to that a bit later. So that is the VVM part. Then there's the M part. M stands for model. That's where the data outside of the view comes from. Flutter also calls this the data layer. There are two parts of this data layer, the repository and the service. The repository is a source of truth for the data used within your application, and the services are used to abstract away API endpoints for the repository to use. This part is best explained using an example. Let's take the user's information that is coming from Firebase services. We can have a home view that is the home page of our application, and it shows the username of that user in the app bar. The home view model will contain all the business logic for the home view and exposes a listenable with the data. In our example, the home view model will contain a value notifier of type user data that the app bar in the home view can listen to. The user repository layer does not store any data, but in our example, it should have a function called stream user data where it provides up-to-date information. It is a stream because if the username gets updated, we want anybody using this function to be notified. Also, this is based on the user being authenticated. So if for any reason the user gets unauthenticated, we want to send no data or an error state. This last step is a service action. The stream user data function in the repository needs two services, an authentication service and a database service. In our case, the authentication service would use Firebase Auth and the database service would use Firestore. Each of these services would expose the necessary connections for getting the authentication state and the user data. You can see this is quite a bit cumbersome. However, there are massive benefits for having a good architecture. Going with our example, if we want to change our backend service provider from Firebase to something like AppRite or Supabase, all we need to do is change two files in our application. The rest stays the same and everything should work like before. A good architecture is the key part of maintaining code and being able to work effectively with the team. The architecture we teach in our course is actually very similar. There is one key naming difference, and that naming difference is my biggest question mark after reading the Flutter documentation. What Flutter calls a service, we call a data source. In this image, it's pictured as outside data. But we also have a service in our approach. This service, however, is used for app-wide state. And my confusion with the Flutter MEVM documentation is that they don't mention app-wide state anywhere, at least as far as I could tell. The closest I found to mentioning app-wide state is this one paragraph talking about a logout view that can be in multiple parts of the application. However, multiple times before and after this section, it's mentioned that each view model needs to be tied to one view. But there are times where it doesn't make sense to do that, and we need a class to handle that data that is app-wide. If we use this logout view example, it means that every logout button needs to be exactly the same in all parts of your application, and the logout functionality is tied directly to that button. But what if you want a different looking button? What if you want to use the logout functionality in a switch account action? From what I understand in this documentation is that if you use MVVM according to Flutter, you either have to have app-wide state look and act the same way across the entire application, or everything has to come from a service. Neither of those seem like a good approach to me and feel like a limitation. For example, implementing multi-page input forms. I don't want data to be sent to the database until I press submit on the very last screen. I might also want to showcase the previous data in a text instead of a text field once it's past the first page of the form. Then there's navigation, search queries, counters, or any temporary state that doesn't need to be in a database. 
You can probably find ways to make this work using a ton of if statements with more complex views and view models, but it seems like a fight against architecture. If I am missing something here, please leave it in the comments. I even desperately tried to ask ChatGPT about how Flutter docs handle app wide state, and it hallucinated a service class like we have in our approach to MVVM. Hopefully, this explanation of Flutter's recommendation of MVVM was clear. A lot of the drama surrounding this whole recommendation is about the name of our architecture. To me, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that the principles are sound, and for most of the documentation, they are. But it seems like app wide state has not been considered, at least not yet. We built our course to be easily updatable. Once this whole drama settles down, we might update our naming if that makes sense. But the principles are the same. We just added app wide state on top. The most important thing is to understand the underlying principles and concepts and be able to adapt. The naming and code syntax doesn't matter as long as your code is maintainable and scalable. If you would like to dive deeper into MVVM, our course is in the description.